Hello third grade and welcome to Writer's Workshop for today. We're going to continue looking at narratives. Remember that a personal narrative is a story about you, a true story about something that you have done. Now we looked at leads and how we can grab the reader's attention by using sounds, questions, attention, action, and dialogue. And then we dug a little bit deeper into dialogue. We practiced um, how to punctuate dialogue by putting quotation marks around what the um, person is saying. And then the tag, who is saying this um, sentence. And then using the correct punctuation inside and outside of those quotation marks. We also looked at adding some juicy words into our writing to keep our reader's attention. Instead of using simple words like good, said, or fun, we can use even juicier sentences like delicious or um, announced or excited. Today, we are going to um, look at how writers show instead of telling how they use their words to show the reader what they mean. Let's go ahead and read an example and then we will analyze it. The perfect spot. Cold, wet sand surrounded my feet on all sides when with each step I took. The cool breeze wafted the scent of musty salt beneath my nose. I continued to walk down the coast as I scanned the beach for the perfect spot. My eyes trailed over flip-flops, small colorful shovels and buckets, assortments of beach towels and giant sun hats. I stopped for a second, noticing an empty area in the sand. Walking quickly, I in that direction, with my bag weighing down my arm, I was too slow. I observed as a man woman and two kids came barreling down from the boardwalk. They stopped in the area I had spotted and heaved a pile of beach chairs and sand toys onto the ground in relief. I threw back my head in frustration and continued my trek down the beach. My eyes continued to comb the beach for a clearing in the sand. Sweat began to roll down my forehead and disappeared behind my ear. I also noticed a few squawking seagulls, <clears throat> friends that had joined me in my stroll and looked at me like I should throw them a snack. I started to worry that there were no areas left on the beach to carry out my much anticipated plan. It's a little bit larger. Suddenly, I saw a blue flying saucer soaring towards my face. My head darted left and then right. As I tried to avoid it, I lucked out and skimmed, it skimmed my head. As I let reality set in about the situation, I heard a boy call out. Hey, mister, can you throw me my frisbee? That was awesome the way you dodged it, he yelled. Huh? Oh, sure. I mumbled and then spread the blue frisbee spread the blue frisbee as it laid on the ground in front of me. I picked it up and purposefully threw it back with some speed that almost knocked the kid off his feet as he caught it. I shot him a thumbs up and continued on my way. I felt hopeless and watched as a tiny sand crab scurried across my path. My bag was like a sack of potatoes sprawled over my shoulder. At last, I, I spied, that's the word, I spied what could be the groundwork for my little plan. I walked down a bit further. The sand clumped between my toes to survey the area. The closest people were about a dozen yards away and clearing <clears throat> the clearing of the sand was huge. And there was plenty of room to work <clears throat> to work with. The sand was saturated, soggy and moldable. 
A smile spread across my face as I let out a long sigh. I dropped my bag, claimed the area for myself, and then I unpacked my bag. I loaded my heavy-duty garden shovel and my carving tool, as well as a few buckets of different sizes. I had my spot and my tools, and I was ready to build the best sandcastle this beach had ever witnessed. Now, in this writing, they gave us a lot of detail. He didn't just say, I went to the beach, I couldn't find a spot. He added everything that happened. He added what it looked like, what it felt like, and all the other people that were there. So when we show and don't just tell, I went to the beach, the readers, <clears throat> The readers know where you are at. So in your writing, you need to show the readers where you are. In your location, we can call that the setting in our writing. You need to describe what it smelled like, what it looked like, what it sounded like in that area. So please type this out as we read through each one of these options. Make sure you're writing this out on your class, class kick. I was in the kitchen. So instead of just saying I was in the kitchen, the smell of the onion made my eyes water. The sound of the water bubbling in the pot and the timer beaming made my stomach growl. The second one, we were in the car. Instead of just saying that, you can say my seatbelt clicked into place <clears throat> just as the engine came to life. I could hear my parents discussing the, sh the shortest route and the upbeat music on the radio. Instead of saying I went to the beach, I listened to the waves crash and breathed in the salty air. The sand was soft between my toes. On your class kick, you have an added section on the bottom and I want you to use show, don't tell to describe your setting right now. If you are going to write a personal narrative about your day, I want you to think about what you're doing right now and all the sounds, all the things you smell, all the things you see to show the reader um, what you are doing right now as you're doing school at home. Once you are finished with this activity, you are done with Writer's Workshop and you can move on to the next section.